Hey guys, really quick video about um, chronic fatigue and migraines because a lot of it for me wasn't really the dizziness, it was actually the fatigue. And a lot of people when you say you have vestibular migraines, they just think it's a headache. They don't understand how bad the fatigue is. Um, like in the early days, I said many times, I couldn't wash my hair at all. Like the amount of effort it took to hold the shower head up, um, to dry my hair was a no-go. There's no way I could hold a hairdryer. It, I, I would have to sleep after I was so tired. So a massive part of this is actually the fatigue. And chronic fatigue, they usually say, is if you've had like extreme exhaustion for six months or more. And I know a lot of us have that, you know. Um, it can also give you flu-like symptoms I've got here. It can make you feel dizzy and sick. You can have sore throats, muscle pain, headaches, sleep problems. So if you are having problems explaining it to somebody, it is worth looking into the chronic, t you know, the chronic fatigue side of it and telling people it's complete exhaustion for months and months on end, okay? Um, for me, that was a game changer. But just, just by saying the word migraine, people wouldn't, wouldn't understand at all. They wouldn't understand why I was tired after going for a walk in the early days of 15 minutes and I had to go home and sleep because they're like, well, she's got a migraine, so why is she needing to sleep? So the moment I started saying to people, it's like chronic fatigue, you know? They're like, oh, yeah, I understand. I know somebody with that, you know? So it's a game changer for me. And um, it's always good to have goals with this as well. So in the early days, my goal would be to uh, walk around the block. <laughs> and one of my biggest goals was after I made it around the block and I wasn't too dizzy and I could do that, would be to walk for an hour. And then once I managed the hour, then it would be walk for a mile. And after three years, I managed to surf again, which was huge for me. And when I mean surf, guys, I mean going in there for like 20 minutes and then having to leave because I was so tired. So two days rest, going back, surfing for 20 minutes, exhaustion, leaving again. But I did my goal and I had a vision board, which is really important to tell you as well. I had a vision board next to my bed for literally five, five years, I'd say. And it was um, off a girl surfing, which I found in a Tampax magazine. You know, these girly magazines where I stick down my vision board, I want to surf again. And then I also had pictures of Costa Rica because I've always wanted to surf in Costa Rica. So I had pictures of Costa Rica, turtles, surfing. And next year should be epic for me because I'm planning on finally going to Costa Rica. It's going to be a mission. It's going to be like an 11 hour plane, another plane to get to Costa Rica um, where I want to go to the area. Um, a, a taxi ride and I, the reason I'm going for a month is I know I'm going to suffer from extreme exhaustion after just the, the trip alone and then I need time to adjust so my aim is at the end of the month to finally start paddling into green waves again now I've surfed on and off for since I was 21 so maybe yeah. 20 years but the weird thing is even though I could always turn left and right so my balance is pretty good once I'm on the board once I catch the wave I'm fine I can never catch the wave and after living in Bondi for a year and a half, I'd started getting dizzy on the beach, like things feel surreal and moving. And that's when I realised that the vestibular migraines were hitting me. Um, I didn't know what it was back then, but even my friends didn't understand and the instructors didn't get it. And they said, but you can surf, so we don't understand why you physically cannot catch a wave. You're out here four days a week. You, you live in Bondi, you surf for like a year and a half out here but you can't catch a wave physically. I couldn't, I just couldn't. I found it so hard to catch green waves. The only waves I caught would be by accident if there was a bigger wave behind me and I paddled and managed to get up at the same time. But if I really wanted to catch a specific wave, it took everything I had. I can't even explain how exhausted I was. I used to rely on pushing off on sandbars to my feet. I used to stand in the water and when a wave came, I'd push off and catch the wave that way. I just had nothing in me. And even though my muscles were really developed, I, was re I had like a proper surface body, like I was really developed muscle-wise. I had such exhaustion and I've had that on and off throughout my whole life. And now I'm realizing it was just a bit of migraines. Again, it's the fatigue. So wish me luck next year, I'm planning on it. This goal means more to me than anything in my whole life. You've no idea. I've planned it for six years. I've wanted to do this for, for maybe 15 years, you know, maybe more than that. It's my one life goal is to surf and catch green waves by myself and be strong enough to do that. So probably next year I'm planning it. Um, so again, guys, start small, have a vision board, put your goals down, what you want to do. Really, really important. 
And also, if people are struggling to understand, tell them you have symptoms of chronic fatigue, and usually they, they get that, and it makes your life easier, trust me. Like if you need to leave a birthday party early or something like that, or if you can't go on a hike, you say I get chronic fatigue, and they understand. That's it. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>